Take the responsibility. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I want to see explode out onto the world. Now, I started the One Rule series because we do a lot of top tens. A lot of the messages come up over and over and over and over again. And some of the most consistently repeated messages by all of these successful people, we smush into the One Rule series. And so today, we're going to learn how you can take responsibility. Enjoy. One of the things that's really interesting about the Old Testament is that, and the Jews in the Old Testament is that they don't take the path of Cain. Every time they're walloped by God, which is like fairly frequently, they say, we must have done something wrong and we have to set ourselves right. And that's a, an unbelievably heroic attitude because that's the alternative to cursing fate. It's like you take the responsibility for failure onto yourself and you think, well, if I was just, maybe if I just had my act together a little bit more, if I took advantage of every opportunity that was put in front of me, if I wasn't resentful and bitter, then I could have done something that would have tilted the situation in a different direction. And like, that's almost inevitably true. Dostoevsky, I think, said something like, every man is responsible for everything that happens to him and everything that happens to everyone else. And that's, you know, that, that's, that's a, it's a crazy statement, right? It's a crazy statement. And he was a pretty extreme person in many, many ways. But there's a level at which that's metaphysically true, you know, because what happens is that it's, it's failure to act often that's the most catastrophic, you know? I mean, I've, uh, it's, it's, it's to not do the right thing when the, when the situation presents itself. And it's very specific. You know, you're constantly in situations where you could do the right thing if you were willing to take a risk that's actually of relatively moderate size. And you know that you could take the risk and you know that you should take the risk and you don't. And that happens to people all the time. And then what happens is the thing that they didn't oppose grows a little bit and they shrink a little bit. And that starts a loop, hey? What did you find fascinating about Tyler, the creator from Our Future? I, I found that he was he was he was a young kid, but he was extremely disciplined in however he put himself together, and he would do various things. You know, what you'll notice on on fifteen of these subjects is they all do various different things, but it's the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that we we no longer are take control of our lives. Many of us we allow the rest of the world to take care take take our responsibilities from us and make us their problem right so uh we have to be selfish and i looked at it in a certain way that tyler was being selfish in the same way i'll give you an example i'll get right back to how tyler is when we wake up in the morning we usually have a hundred emails and then we then go look on social media and we then kiss the kids or the uh, the husband the, the 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 wife whatever and run out we go on uh you know we we get in the car and we listen to the news and the entire world blew up and then we get to the office and we're dealing with everybody else we get home cook for the kids or maybe the husband wife or the roommate and then we start it all over again but what I noticed with the people earlier on in their in their lives or in their day, what they do the first 90 minutes is they get up, they don't answer any emails for the first hour because they don't care about everybody else's problems. They send out emails, but uh -huh. they won't answer everybody else's because we're so busy taking care of everybody else's problems. Uh -huh. They won't look at social media because you get social media depression because everybody on social media is doing great. They got a big car. They're all beautiful. They all got big butts or skinny uh -huh. butts, whatever you like, right? And before you know it, you're, <laughs> <laughs> before you know it, you're late for work, yeah. right? You don't even put any time in. So what these people do is they won't answer any email because they look at their inbox as their defense. They look at their outbox as offense. They'll send out all these emails. Yeah. They won't look at social media. They'll go ahead and take time and schedule time with their kids, their wife, whoever it is for the next night or tomorrow, whatever the case is, because they know if they keep saying, we'll hang out, they'll never get to it. Mm -hmm. They eat something healthy. They'll do four sets of 25, like you said. You'll do four sets of 25 push-ups, get their adrenaline running. Mm -hmm. yes. Then they'll get out there and they'll start doing things. And what people usually don't do is they never take time for themselves to ask themselves, who do they want to be tomorrow, next year, in 10 years? And Tyler, even as a young kid, he'll go out there and he'll sit in a tree for an hour with his friends. Yeah. He'll just sit in a tree because... We usually forget who we wanted to be. We're answering everybody else's problem. We're a mother, we're a father, we're a husband, we're, we're whoever else. And he takes a, 
about an hour a day and sits in the street and writes everything down. He doesn't put it on his cell phone. He doesn't put it in his smartphone mm-hmm. on the tablet. Mm-hmm. And he uses that as a Bible and every day keeps navigating him towards success. And I've noticed that every person in the book does the same exact thing in one form or another. They mm-hmm. may do it at midnight. They may do it in the morning time. Mm-hmm. But they all give praise. They thank what they have around them, Mm -hmm. and then they see how they can build on it by thinking about who they want to be instead of letting everybody else in the world tell them what they want from them. Just enough. 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 Like, living by somebody else's rules is a humongous mistake. I've just literally sat down with five people under the age of 27, and it's so refreshing. It is so refreshing. If you have not jumped on the bandwagon of doing exactly what the you want to do, which is skiing for the next three years or working at a job that's not what your parents want or what society wants, this video is just called Enough. Enough. Make this little one, two minute video, depends on when I finish, the piece of content that gets you to stand up and take life by its throat. Do something. Stop being scared. Stop letting the way you were raised, the fear as an offense, take that away. Let me be the person. I'll take the blame. I loved that some of my employees are like, my parents don't love what you're saying. Good parents because if you are playing defense and if you are living a life where your kids' lives are the way you're being fulfilled, you're a loser, parents. And so enough. Enough parents imposing their way. You want your kids to be happy? On your terms. Enough the kid that's sitting right now at a desk and saw this in a feed and you hate your job, enough. Stand up, get the out of here and do you. Live your life. you got one life. Do something about it. Second one is that you've been lied to for a really long time. That school is a scam that teaches people to be compliant, that tells you to only listen to things that are on the test, encourages you to do the minimum amount, because whatever you can get away with, the rest of the time's yours. That's what we teach you in school. We invented that so that you would get a factory job and do what you were told, because factories needed it, so that's why they invented school. And the brilliant insight that changes everything for people is realizing that responsibility is never given, it's taken. And that if you choose to take responsibility, all these doors open up, and that you get a totally different life in exchange, because Striving for authority, hoping that someone will give you a license to tell other people what to do, that's pretty rare. But if you're willing to take responsibility, then no one can get in your way. I don't think if people take enough responsibility for where they are in life. I think it's too easy to blame other people. It's too easy to blame your government or blame your family for not having the right connections or blame your bank for not giving you the money or you know blame your circumstances. It's too easy. The thing that you need to do, the taking responsibility, It's painful, it's painful. It's way easier to say, well, I'm not successful because of this person or this person or this person. It's not because of you. No, of course not, it's because of your president. That's why you're not successful. And it's not until you actually look yourself in the mirror and realize that there is no cavalry coming to save the day for you. You know, there's no fairy godmother coming down to grant your every wish. It's on you and you are responsible for where you are right now. You, you may not be responsible for you know, where you're born, but once you become an adult, you know, you're responsible for your life. You can only blame your parents and blame your upbringing for so long, where if you wanna make a dramatic change in your life, you have the power to do it. And there's tons of people who've done it, and there's tons of people who, who started with way less. Look at most successful, famous entrepreneurs, people that you look up to, people who you think now are living the, the big life. You look at where they started, look at where they came from. Chances are they had way less in terms of money, in terms of education, in terms of resources, in terms of connections than what you already have right now. The difference is their mindset. The difference is that they took responsibility for where they're at. The difference is they said, if I'm going to get to where I need to go, nobody's going to hand it to me. I need to do this myself. And so if you look yourself in the mirror and you're saying, why am I not successful? and you're coming back with excuses, then (laughs) that's what you need to change. And recognize that as soon as you understand that this is on you to change your life, it's on you to build your business, and nobody's coming to save you, and that you can do it. Once you accept responsibility, things start to change. It's take no less than 100% responsibility for your life. 
You know, one of the greatest myths that's pervasive in our culture today is that you're entitled to a great life and that somehow, somewhere, someone is responsible for filling our lives with continual happiness and exciting career options, a nurturing family and blissful personal relationships simply because we exist. But the real truth is that there's only one person responsible for the quality of your life, and that person is you. You see, everything about you is a result of your doing or not doing. Your income, your debt, your relationships, your health, your fitness level, your attitudes and behaviors, everything. That person you see when you look in the mirror is the chief architect in your life. You know, I think everybody knows this in their heart of hearts, but the mind can play games tricking us into thinking that there are external factors that are the source of our failures, our disappointments, and our unhappiness. But the truth of the matter is that external factors don't determine how you live. You, and only you, are in complete control of the quality of your life experience. Successful people take full responsibility for the thoughts they think, the images they visualize, and the actions they take. They don't waste their time and energy on blaming and complaining. They evaluate their experiences and decide if they need to change them or not. They face the uncomfortable and they take risks in order to create the life that they want to live. There is no such thing as complete control. Nothing. No one has complete control in any situation. People that leading organizations in some ways have less because not only do they have to control what they do, they have to help persuade everyone else what they do. But, you know, if you are able to take responsibility, I'm not late because there was traffic, I'm late because I didn't leave early enough to account for the fact that there was traffic. The project didn't get finished, not because my friend, the, my partner didn't do it, my colleague didn't do his part. The, the project didn't get finished because I didn't set up a team where my colleague wanted to do his part. When you take responsibility and you take full responsibility, that is the most empowering thing and you can do it at any stage. You have to do it if you're raising money as an entrepreneur, you have to do it if you're, if you're trying to persuade people to work with you, you have to do it at all stages. I'm trying to think of how to stop the loop of my sacrifices have been rejected and, and the way that you stop that loop is instead of saying the sac my sacrifices were rejected, so my hard work, my effort, my everything that I'm doing to try and move forward, it's not working. And and if you want to go towards hell, you keep saying, well, it's it's not working, but it's but it's because of everyone else. It's they're rejecting me. They're not accepting what I've done. Whereas if you say to yourself, oh, it didn't work. Okay, it's my fault. What can I do better? And that's how you start moving in the other direction. What point were you working at McDonald's? And that was, that was an acting training ground for you and was. no one else. It, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's what you make of your circumstances. I mean, I so I went to UCLA. Uh, I was a literature major. My my dad wanted me me to be a math major. I wanted to go to art school to compromise that I study literature. Once I got to UCLA, uh, I you know I I realized you know half the town was in the movie business and suddenly I saw that there were practical steps I could take to get into the movies and I didn't seem to be doing that you know in my Milton class you know it just seemed like the long road to I, don't, I didn't even know where and so I uh, eventually dropped out of UCLA after a year and went to acting school in the valley and um, and my parents said they wouldn't support me if I wasn't going to university and so uh, I I had to get a job and I couldn't, you know, all the other actors had better, all the, you know, they were, they got all the great waiting jobs and somebody said, you're too good to work at McDonald's. And I said, no. And you know, it was, a, I, you know, cause I, I wanted to be an actor and it, it felt like that was the only way I would, I would be able to do it. It was not, it was a really important lesson actually that, you know, going in and working and being responsible for myself really showed me how much I wanted to act like yeah. I it wasn't the it, it soft way I, you know I had to really work for it I walked around G preaching constantly don't you ever think you're a victim if you ever feel like a victim get out because if enough of you get out we'll find out who's making you feel like a victim it's your job to take responsibility go find another game there's plenty of games here unemployment's low here 
Go find something else. Go on your own. Do something. But Jesus, don't spend most of your waking hours feeling like a victim. Now, I've got a very special Take Responsibility bonus clip with Brian Tracy that I think you're really going to enjoy. But before that, I want to know, what do you need to take more responsibility of in your life and in your business? What's the single area that you have not owned up to enough? Leave it down in the comments below. I really want to hear from you. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. And I hope that by writing it down, now you're going to own it. You've made it public, you've shared it, now you're going to own it. So put in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon, and enjoy the bonus clip. If you've made a mistake or something has happened in the past that's unfortunate, you can cancel it out by simply saying the magic words, I am responsible, I am responsible, I am responsible. If someone has hurt you or you've had a difficult experience in your childhood, you can say, well, I didn't do anything. Yes, but you're responsible for how you respond today. A Nobel Prize winning study of the evolution of civilizations came up with the term responsibility. Is your ability to respond effectively with the ups and downs and negative events of life is the key measure of your ability to be successful and happy in the future. And the first, what you do is you say, whenever you feel negative or unhappy about anything, you say, wait a minute, I'm responsible. I'm responsible for my life. I'm responsible for what happens. I can't change the past, so I'm not gonna spend a second worrying about the past. I'm gonna become so busy working on my future and my goals that I don't have time to think about the past. Raise your standard. Apple at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. I don't ever give up. I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to see my all-time favorite top 10 rules of success, I have a very special secret video for you. These are the individual clips that I have personally learned the most from and applied to my life and my business. Check the link in the description for details.